Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here and by the end of this video you will know which ammo to use at each trader level so no matter where you are in the wipe so far you'll see what's best and what's coming up soon. With all of the changes this now goes from level 1 to level 45 so let's get into it with the first few available at level 1. The most powerful cartridge that you can get at proper 1 is the 54R FMJ which has 33 pen and 84 damage which is 2 tapping every class 3 arm in the game which is pretty cool. It only starts to struggle a little bit more with class 4. Naturally though you can only load this into the Mosin when you first start off so although it's extremely powerful you're very limited in terms of guns that can actually go into it. For something with a little bit more flexibility for 7.62x39 you can buy FMJ now that PS is up on Prapor 2 and the same with T45 which are the slightly more powerful versions of this cartridge. FMJ has 26 pen and 63 damage so it's decent on the damage side but on the penetration you might have to shoot somebody twice in the head if they're wearing a class 3 helmet to actually go through. The beauty here is that you can find PS rounds on fence relatively regularly as well as in-game and on scabs as well so it doesn't mean that you can't use this caliber at all it just gives you something to play with if you don't have any whatsoever. Another alternative in the 762 by 25 mm Tokarev cartridge is AKBS which is also on Prapor 1 and has the most reducing recoil stat on it which is very useful for using the PPSH. While it has an extremely fast fire rate it's known for being quite unwieldy so this can help you hit a few more headshots. So very early on you can only buy FMJ for 545 from Jaeger and T from Prapor which which are both 20 and 21 pen and not actually that good but you can get 545 PS for Prapple relatively early once you complete delivery from the past. This is one of his starter quests and although it's a little bit tricky in comparison to some of the others it is worth doing early to get access to this. With 31 pen it's a lot better than 21 and the beauty of 545 is that you can find a lot of better ammos in raid as well like PP or BT and you can use those in your weapons on top of these to stretch it out a bit before you get to the flea. Over on Skier his most powerful cartridge is 7.62x51 TCW and just so happens if you find yourself with a Vepa Hunter or an RFB or something like that you can buy that from him with 87 damage and 30 pen. This is not a common choice early on because usually people wait until level 2 traders for BCP but it is something that you can do if you find yourself in that particular situation. He also sells one of the staple shotgun rounds the 7mm buck which we'll talk about in a second with Jaeger. Jaeger 1 sells the full complement of 525 buck, 7mm buck and express buckshot which are all very good against various targets. Express moves the fastest and 725 moves the slowest with 7mm as kind of a middle ground. Interestingly because of the way that damage drop off works 525 moves the slowest and so drops off the least and so although it starts off with less damage than 7 mil you actually end up doing more damage to players outside of about 10 meters. Express Buckshot on the other hand has one extra pellet compared to the other two and so it all kind of comes out in the wash and you can really pick any of these. Jaeger also stocks the 366 TKM EKO round which is actually really quite good early on with 73 damage and 30 pen. It does only go in the VPO 209 and the 215 so you're very limited on actual guns but you can buy some of these early too and it performs quite well compared compared to the other cartridges that you have available. The one final cartridge to mention over on Jaeger 1 is the TTLRNPC which is again for the PPSH and is very similar to the AKBS. It has minus 10 recoil rather than minus 15 but it does a little bit more damage so it just kind of depends which way you want to go. I prefer this for leg meta but it's really up to you. Over on to Peacekeeper 1 he has for the 45 ACP caliber Match FMJ which is an extremely strong starting bullet with 72 damage and 25 pen. This used to be extremely popular into the UMP and has fallen out of favor a little bit partly due to some of the nerfs of the UMP has taken but it can be quite strong early on. Finally given that they moved PST up to level 2 traders for 9x19 Parabellum you now can get FMJ M882 on Peacekeeper 1 which is functionally the same. It is 2 pen less and 2 more damage which practically speaking makes absolutely no difference at all. So although you don't get it straight away because you have to find some things in raid to make it you can access the workbench from level 1 technically and in here there are two bullets that are worth mentioning. The first one is Magnum Buckshot which can be crafted for a kite gunpowder and a classic match is costing about 300 rubles per shell. Magnum Buckshot can be extremely powerful because its 400 raw damage is actually one of the highest in the entire game so it can take down geared players to the legs relatively easily. The only thing to bear in mind about it is the increased recoil which is especially noticeable on semi-auto shotguns which is the reason why I don't use it because it kind of screws up with my muscle memory and I find the recoil too high to control. Some people swear by this cartridge though so at least it's an option in the workbench if you do want to use it. The other cartridge worth mentioning is PMM PSTM which I think is arguably the best cartridge in 9x18. Although it's not the highest penetration it has a lot more damage than the one that's technically the top of the chart. 
only costing one kite gunpowder, this is roughly 140 rubles per bullet, but the one thing to bear in mind is that only the Klin can take this, the Keda B and the regular Keda cannot due to it being an overpressure round, so just make sure that you're aware of this before you try to use it in all of your 9x18 guns. As an alternative, not using the workbench, Jaeger 1 sells the PSV bullet, which is the most damaging round that you can get access to, and actually the second most damaging within 9x18 in total, so you probably want to use this either for hitting people in the face directly or for leg matter. So now we're going to jump up to level 14, which is technically when you could get access to Peacekeeper level 2. Normally you don't have the cash spent at this point, but if you did invest in that, then you will unlock M856A1 from him, which is new this wipe and used to be locked behind a quest quite far down his line, but now that's been removed so you can get it straight away. M856A1 is a real staple of the 556 mid-game due to its 37 penetration, which sits right on the 50-50 penetration threshold for a full durability class 4, and given that you normally fire this in full auto, it's extremely devastating against it. Also, when comparing it against other bullets, its 54 damage is actually really high. If you look at some other calibers, like 7.62x39, you expect to be high damage. The bullets there, like PS and BP, only have 57 and 58 damage, so to have 54 coming out of 5.56 is really quite good. This pairs really well with some other guns that have come cheaply this wipe, such as the G36 and the Org on Peacekeeper and on the Flea Market. Moving 5.6A1 further back in the progression, I think this wipe has really helped with the casual players or those who don't have as much time because it allows you to compete so much more effectively right from level 14. So the other cartridge which is available on Peacekeeper 2 is a bit of a wild card which is 45 Hydroshock with 100 damage and 13 pen. With these stats it's most useful for leg meta which is slightly counterintuitive with the UMP's slow fire rate but if you do manage to pick up a 45 Vector it can be extremely powerful, although magazines are a little bit of an issue at low level. So moving up to level 15, which is where we find most of our ammunitions because we get Prapor at level 2, Skier and Jaeger as well. At Prapor 2 we unlock LPS and T46M which are the staples of the 762x54R category because they deal with class 4 armor extremely easily and the SVT unlocks at this level 2 which has become 13.5's bang for buck go to. You also now have direct access to 762x39PS and T45M which also are pretty good against class 4 as well as 545 BT on a barter. At this point in time I tend to just use 545 PP at prep or 2 but you can use BT as well from that barter to top load if you want to just give a little bit of extra punch into your magazines. For those 9x18 fanatics you can get the most penetrating round and the most damaging round after completing glory to the CPSU at prep or 2 which is SP7 for the most damage with 77 and PBM for the most pen which is 28. Now skier 2 doesn't have a great deal just 762 by 51 BC but unfortunately Jaeger 2 also has that but for a cheaper price so Ski is really useless at this point in time. Jaeger though has two other shotgun cartridges which is the first of the Good Slugs 1270 FTX which I actually don't really mind at 183 damage with only 20 pen but it has the important plus 135% accuracy which actually allows you to hit targets at decent distances. The other one is the arrival of Magnum Buckshot on the traders so now you don't need to craft it at the level 1 workbench and can buy it from him directly. So next up we're going to jump to level 20 which is at Mechanic 2 and he sells two rounds for the MP7 which is JSP SX and Subsonic SX. At this point in time it's actually quite difficult to run the MP7 because of the lack of 30 rounders but JSP isn't half bad with 46 damage and 32 pen. It's not great but it's certainly better than Subsonic is now because that got nerfed all the way down to 23 penetration which makes it very difficult to use. Even though it kept its minus 22% recoil buff I still advise using JSP if you're really going to use the MP7 at this early stage. Another reason why level 20 is important is because after Mechanic 2 you can get the Workbench 2 as well, so level 20 is the earliest that you're able to build this. Here you can start to get some decent bullets, one of which is SNB for 54R which is extremely powerful and the fact that you can get it here combined with the new AVT or SVT makes it really really good. It's always been very good in the Mosin or in the SVD but now with the advent of these new guns it's extremely powerful at a very early stage in the progression. It's not necessarily that cheap costing 1 Hawk gunpowder and 40 LPS but at 1200 ish per bullet given that it penetrates all armors including class 6 on the very first hit it's actually kind of nuts. You also get access to another old classic M80. Now it does take quite a while and you only get 80 out of the craft and it does cost 2400 ish per round because it's 2 cut gunpowders and eagle and 4 screw nuts. But M80 is very very good in certain weapons like the RFB because it deals with class 4 extremely easily and you can stack it on top of BCP F 
FMJ to great effect to allow the ammo to go further if you want to use this particular cartridge. 366 APM is a slightly strange one. It's like a better version of M80 and is one of the few bullets in the game that can one tap a class 3 to the chest. However, as we said before, it can only fit into the VPO 215 and the VPO 209. And one problem with this craft is that you have to use SP6 in order to make it. SP6 is prep all 4 and so it's kind of hard to do this at level 2 unless you find a lot in raid but to be fair you can still buy APM on the flea market so there's another route to get this ammo without using the workbench. There are quite a few options for decent high end SMG rounds being SS190 which is the best round for the P90, 9x21BT for the shrimp and the SR2M, ACPAP for the UMP and the vector and AP6.3 for the 9mm weapons. If you're particularly fond of any of these submachine guns then you can go and craft these ammos but I personally don't think it's really worth it because it takes a long time and the way and the nature that you use these weapons in means that the ammo will disappear extremely quickly. Out of these the best one probably is 45 ACP AP because it's got really good stats and it doesn't actually cost that much. It's only about 600 around versus 190 and BT which are more like 1500. Two other possibilities are 12 gauge rip and piranha. Piranha is a little bit like a budget version of flechette if you can't get access to it and typically take one more volley to the chest on most armors four to six to be able to kill. Rip rounds for the shotguns is an interesting one. They used to two-shot people to the legs but now because of the way that black limb damage changed it now only distributes 70% to the rest of the body so it now requires three. So I actually don't think it's really worth using rip anymore. Jumping up to our first level three trader at level 22 this is Jaeger 3. Now you're probably only going to get Jaeger 3 if you have EOD because standard account players struggle with the actual reputation and getting through enough tasks by this level to get it. That being said two interesting cartridges you get here is 12 gauge 50 BMG which is like a poor man's version of AP20 with 26 pen if you really are keen on using high damage slugs with some decent penetration and the 1270 copper slug which I think is one of my favorites it performs relatively well in terms of zeroing and has the second highest accuracy benefit with very high damage of 206 and so it's actually pretty decent for long range shooting with a shotgun if you're into that. Also, once you've completed the quest Forest Clearing, which does require you to do the six kills on the factory office first, you can then buy Flechette. This basically supersedes Piranha and a lot of the other close range cartridges for shotguns, in my opinion, because of the way that it shreds armor and allows you to hit center of mass. One level higher at level 23 comes our next level three trader, which is Peacekeeper 3. And here we get quite a few interesting bullets. The first one is 300 M62 for the MCX, not to be confused with 762 by 51. And this one performs very similarly to M85 6A1. Given where 56A1 is now in the progression curve and the performance of the MCX without modding it heavily, I still don't think this is worth using over the 556 weapons, but it's interesting to note you can get this here in the advent of the slightly better rounds that we can get at Skier 3 a little bit later that we'll talk about in a moment. After completing the cult part 1, you can now get access to M855A1, which has been one of the strongest performing rounds this white because previously this was only accessible on Peacekeeper 4. This makes 56A1 extremely viable in the mid game and stacking this on top of 5.6A1 allows it to go much further than you would otherwise. A few other niche choices from Peacekeeper 3 is L191 with 53 damage and 33 pens, so it's not as good as the old SB193 used to be, which was the subsonic round which also got nerfed within the 5.7 caliber. A better alternative in my opinion is FMJSX, which has a greatly increased penetration of 40, and with its damage of 43 it deals very well with class 4 armor. The only issue with this one is that it's sold out pretty much all of the time, so you have to camp the trader if you hope to get any of it. But short of crafting SS190 this is the best that you can get if you want to use that gun. You can also buy AP6.3 from him directly here if you do like using 9mm although I find that AP6.3 is one of the most underwhelming cartridges in the whole game and lures you into a false sense of security saying armor penetrating in the name because it only has 30 pen which means that it barely deals with class 3. Finally you can get 9mm Quake Maker with 85 damage makes it a sort of worse version of Hydroshock but the 9mm weapons do tend to have a higher fire rate than the UNP so it does make that relatively viable for leg meta. You can also usually get bigger magazines for 9mm guns too. So skipping up the levels to level 26 with Prattle 3, he gives you some really meaty options. Back to the big caliber 762 by 54 RPS is a really good round with 45 penetration and 84 damage. It's not an instant pen against class 5, but the extra pen does help. You also unlock here 762 by 39 PP for your AKM series and maybe your mutant or your RD later on. We'll talk in a moment about how BP got pushed later in the progression, but PP is a good middle ground between PS and BP, with PS being 35 pen, BP being 47 pen, and PP being right in the center with 41. This gives 762 by 30 weapons a way to deal with class 4 very easily and also to be able to take down class 5 with some decent numbers of hits. 
For those who like to use 545 because of the cheapness of the weapons that use it, you can now buy BT directly from him after completing Punisher 4, and you can also barter for 545 BS, which is one of the strongest assault rifle cartridges that you can get from the traders. With BS's 52 pen and BT's 42 pen, you kind of have a way to deal with all armor classes here, and so other than the low damage of 545, these actually can be quite good. A few other weapons that open up here with Prapple 3 are the VSS, because you can buy SPP, which has 68 damage and 40 pen, which is very decent. The SR2M also opens up because although you can craft the top bullet BT with 39 pen, PS has 35 pen and is accessible from Prep 3. So this allows you to use the SR2M much more easily because you can fill a bunch of mags with this and actually perform relatively well. Finally, you also get access to Shrap 10 and Shrap 25, which is a rare sight for the KS23 these days, but it is accessible here if you do want to use it. The Black Limb changes have damaged this one slightly too because you can no longer one-shot people most of the time. You have to hit every single pellet to do so. Moving up to more levels to skier 3 at level 28 he unlocks the 300 cbj round for the mcx and this one is very good with 58 damage and 43 pen making it kind of equivalent to m855a1 which is an extremely good cartridge for 556 except with more damage 58 damage is extremely high for a fast firing bullet such as this and it actually makes the mcx pretty decent in the mid to late game now that blackout ap is finding raid only this is really the best that you can get because you can't even craft that one anymore two levels later and we end up at mechanic mechanic 3 and this is where we can then purchase 336 APM outright for the VPO 215 and the VPO 209. We also unlock Workbench 3 technically speaking and this has lots of the endgame ammos available in it although some of these are kind of locked off compared to the way they were before. BP from Last Wipe is no longer craftable here and is now much further down the level progression instead of being in the Workbench. M61 is still available here but you have to complete Shooterborn in Heaven before you do so which is 5 headshots from any distance with bolt actions on all of the maps barring factory and labs. My other favourite is M995 which is an extremely strong addition over the top of 855A1 and especially powerful for stacking in magazines together. With only 42 damage you do want to keep centre of mass shots on target because otherwise if you're hitting lots of limbs you might not kill them but it's extremely powerful at going through class 5 armour with its 53 pen. Two cartridges that are good for making money because they're accessible on the flea market is 762 by 39 pp that we talked about before at Prapple 3 and 300 Blackout CPJ. Both of these can be crafted in the workbench and then sold to players on the flea market at extortionate prices. I don't recommend buying these, but usually somebody will. Outside of this, there are a bunch of other niche choices, one being PS12B for the Ash 12, which can one-shot players wearing class 4 straight to the chest in one go. It won't do that with class 5 because the damage reduction is too high, but it does have a 50-50 chance of penetrating. You can also craft a Golnik for 545, which I think the damage is slightly too low on. You can craft PAB9 for the VSS, which is very good, and if you're using the VSS, is certainly a worthwhile consideration if you don't have sp6 apsx is interesting to compound on fmj to allow you to penetrate higher tier armor although my feelings about smgs also are the same here because you just don't really get enough for the amount of time it takes to craft 9mm pvp is maybe interesting because 9mm weapons in general usually have an extremely low recoil and with 52 damage and 39 pen it has decent stats compared to the other smgs so combined with low recoil it could be an option you can also craft 9mm rip as well for leg meta and ap20 slugs for shotguns if that's the way you want to go i'm not a huge fan of ap20 slugs because they only have a 50 50 pen chance against class 4 but when they do pen they'll kill people in one shot so moving up into the level 4 traders with jaeger 4 at level 33 as our first one and he sells 9 mil rip for leg meta and 12 gauge super performance slugs for the shotguns this slug is some people's favorites because it has the highest accuracy percentage at plus 170 percent and one of the highest damages overall with 220 which does make it quite decent but the one thing i would be careful about is the starting muzzle velocity of super performance slugs is extremely extremely high which makes the zeroing kind of funky. It's worth using it a few times just to get used to it because often you have to shoot low to hit high on your target which is kind of odd. At level 36 on Prapple 4 we unlock some of the final big bullets for 54R being BT after completing Punisher 3 which is my favourite overall and 54R BS after completing Shooter 8 which is like an even better version of SMB which is sort of overkill. After completing Test Drive 1 you can access two of the best bullets for the VSS being the SP6 although you have to be a bit careful about heat for this one and BP which is behind a barter. Up at Peacekeeper 4 level 37 we unlock 338 FMJ which is for the Lapua Magnum series of weapons being the AXMC bolt action and also the Mark 18 Mjolnir if you do complete the quest through Sturman to get access to it. 762 by 51 NATO weapons properly come online at Peacekeeper 4 as well because you get access to M80 and M62 after completing Spartor 6 which allows you to run the SR25s and the RSASs of this world. One level later at level 
38, we get access to Skier 4, but the only thing he really has is 9mm rip after completing the quest setup. Mechanic 4 is similar at level 40, only providing 0.45 rip, and previously this was the end of the ammo progression, except now at Prapor 4, you have to be level 45 to get 762 by 39 BP, which is where it's ended up now that it can't be crafted in the workbench level 3. To get this one, you have to complete the quest Intimidator. Ultimately itself, it's quite an easy quest, just involving scav kills, but you need to be level 45 to actually unlock the quest itself, which is why it doesn't become available at the same trader level as everything else. So outside of these, there are a few cartridges that are worth looking for in raid and keeping if you do find them, because they're only found within the actual world, not on the traders or any crafts. The first one is 338 the Pure Magnum AP, because this is the only bullet that will one-shot players to the chest wearing class 6 armor. 7N40 for 545 is an interesting one because it comes with an extreme recoil reduction and makes weapons that use it very, very good. It's especially decent for top loading 3 to 5 rounds at the beginning of a magazine to completely negate the initial burst spray at the start of these weapons firing. M993 is like an upgraded version of M61, although M61 cuts through armor like butter anyway, so it's not really required to have an upgrade. MAI AP for 7.62x39 is like an upgraded version of BP, and although the damage is a lot less at 46 versus 58, because the penetration is 58, it means that it will guarantee two shot through all class 5 armors in the game, so it is actually a decent upgrade against BP. Unfortunately, 556's version SSA AP, which is like an upgraded version of M995, because it takes the damage from 42 down to 38, even though the penetration is upgraded, I actually think it's technically worse than M995 because damage is already kind of an issue for that bullet, so losing even more is not really that appealing. But that should give you a full list of all the ammos, no matter where you are in the progression, of what you've got to look forward to and what you can use now at your level. So as usual, a big shout out to all my patrons, and as always, have fun in your race.